and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor, if you do the roll call, please. I'd be happy to. Tom Cruise. He is excused. Thank you. Well, then he doesn't get his Christmas treat, does he? <laughs> Jeff Young. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jacosinski. Here. I'm here. Lisa Collins. Here. Tim Menninger. Here. And Gary Dunlap. Here. Okay, with six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Um, <coughs> approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With that in mind, are there any changes to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, then I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. You see, we have a big crowd, but doesn't look like any public participation. So we'll just continue on and move on. Recognition and thank you, Dr. Mueller. Well, first, we'd like to thank U.S. Cellular for their recent donation of four hundred and eighty-three dollars and ninety cents. Uh, U.S. Cellular is proud to create better community connections by sponsoring teams and organizations that make our communities a better place. So, thank you for letting us be part of your community. Is what they had shared with us. And then we'd like to thank Tim Bear and Chris Staley for their generous 2,500 donation, which will benefit, benefit the Holman High School Robotics Club. So. Wow. Again, on this item on the agenda, we always see the unique um, and very generous con uh, community that we have, and we thank those folks on behalf of the school board. So thank you. Um, then moving on to district administrator's report. So it's been a busy week last week. Monday, all of the sixth and seventh graders at the middle school received their Chromebooks. So now we are a, a total one-to-one -one, uh, school at the middle school, and it's coming for the high school soon. <laughs> if you're in this next coming year. And then um, over 20 teachers from our district attended the Slate Conference. This is a technology conference and really got a lot of great ideas <coughs> and are bringing back to share with their colleagues as to how to um, use technology in the classroom to um, build better instruction for our students. And then our 4K students have successfully transitioned into their new location at Viking Elementary. And then the District Child Care Center is currently serving 16 children. So thank you to the many people who made this possible for their families and all the support that we were given to make this happen. Um, and then we had a great training on workers' comp. We're learning more about that. Um, that's one of our goals in the district, or the indicators that we wanted to improve. So Julie Homan did a great job and had um, uh, someone come and do a training with us, and we're learning more about how to improve that. And then we now have um, a district Facebook page, and each of our buildings have a Facebook page. And listen closely, we have a Twitter account, wow. okay? It's at capital S, capital D, underscore Holman. And this will be a way that we're gonna start communicating some of our school closures besides our traditional website and email to the families and so on and new stations. So we'll be posting signs around and letting people know so that depending on how the, maybe it'll get icy tonight, I don't know. <laughs> um, so that we can keep people up to date with the weather. So, thanks. Okay, are there any questions? Thank you very much. Then moving on under reports and discussions. The high school entrepreneurial class um, has the meltdown. And <laughs> yeah. Luke, if you want to come and present. So, um, hi, I'm Tyler Peterson, and this is Allison Butterfield, and we'd like to thank you for letting us talk a little bit about the entrepreneurship class, as well as our school store meltdown. So we'll start off by telling you a little bit about what our entrepreneurship class is. First of all, you have to qualify to be in the class, so you must take all three of the prerequisite classes, which include marketing and business concepts, advanced marketing, and sports and entertainment marketing. And then our advisors choose 
the students with the top grades in those classes in order to be in this entrepreneurship class. Then we have a pretty unique way of learning. We have a pretty unique way of learning about entre entrepreneurship in our class. We travel to different businesses around the community and learn how those entrepreneurs um, have overcome their struggles and how they thrive and succeed in their businesses. And then our biggest project is our model store. And this year we created Meltdown. Um, we used our knowledge from the field trips uh, and applied this while we were creating our model store. So besides coming up with the name, the next thing that we took care of was coming up with a mission statement to represent who we were and what we wanted to accomplish. So we came up with Meltdown will provide quality customer service in a professional, innovative environment to succeed and make a difference in our community. Then our next step was to decide on a charity. And this year we picked Tyler Shockey because he was a Holman graduate of 2012 and he was currently diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and along with that, he had to take a leave of absence from his job and that resulted in him losing his job and also his insurance along with that. Um, he will go through 12 chemo treatments, so we thought that he would be a great candidate to donate our proceeds to. So after we got all that squared away, we decided to start working on the store, and one of the first things we did was apply for our departments. So we have the seven departments, which would be management, public relations, promotions, sales, operations, interactive media, and human resource. We'll expand a little bit about what each group is responsible for right now. First is the management team uh, <coughs> that consists of Tyler and myself and our mission statement is the management team promises to ensure a working environment that not only succeeds but goes above and beyond your expectations. Um, then some of our tasks that we were in charge of was just supervising everything that was going on. We evaluated our classmates on their productivity. Um, we planned, organized, and ran meetings. We created presentations like this one. Um, and we also worked with all the, the departments to accomplish goals. So next up, we have public relations. The manager of the department would be Maddie Bradshaw. She's back there somewhere. There she is. Um, and the department members of that are Taylor Greenwald, Jenna Butzler, Anna Mayer, Megan Wells, and Jenna Johnson. And they come up with a mission statement. Our mission as the public relations department is to achieve the highest possible standard for organization and communication. Our number one priority is to professionally represent our store and strengthen ties within the community. Are they here, the rest of the team members? Yeah. You guys all want to wave. Hello. <laughs> hey, we don't have everyone today just because some of us are working. So a little bit about what they did. They um, handled all the press releases, invitations to our grand opening on December 12th. They took pictures, they handled the silent auction, as well as presented to a group of middle schoolers. Our next group was promotions. The manager is Marissa Larson. Uh, and the department members are Kate Kalander, Jenna Legler, Chris P Preby, Kenna Fell, Kaylee Duxbury, and Caitlin Long. If you're here, give them a wave. Um, and their mission statement was promoting our store in a positive and professional manner to the best of our abilities and our own individual uniquenesses. And some of the things that Promotions was in charge of was organizing the whole grand opening um, and all the activities and events that went into that. Uh, they also did all the visual merchandising. Uh, they um, put together a high school presentation so our high school students could learn a little bit more about entrepreneurship and what we've been doing for the past couple months. And then they were also in charge of just promoting the store and letting the community know what we were up to and what was going on. So then our next department would be sales and the manager of that is Austin George. The rest of the department members would be Ryan Chapman, Kyle Back, Keaton Gullicksrud, Hannah Qualheim, Michaela Wench, and Abby Miedema. Uh, their mission statement is to provide an exceptional customer service, quality products, and a unique shopping experience while maximizing profits and eliminating losses. And what they did is they created a sales incentive program for the rest of the employees to go out and sell the product. They also secured all the vendors, so all the merchandising. They had to contact people to bring that into the store. They created a training video so that everybody knew how to work the cash register and how to sell products. And they also had all the eighth graders come in when they were in their marketing classes to have a tour of our store. 
Then we have operations. Um, Whitley was the manager, Whitley Charles was the manager of operations, and her department members are Leah Kirkman, Dylan Mason, Kate Hudson, Austin Olson, and Lizzie Watson. And their mission statement was, together we will efficiently accomplish tasks at hand while maintaining quality inventory <coughs> for our store. And some of the things that they were in charge of was keeping track of inventory. They priced and tagged everything that came into our store. Um, they designed and brought in home and apparel. Uh, they created a fifth grade presentation. Uh, they kept track of our daily sales and also they were in charge of all the pricing. So interactive media, the manager is Danny Holzer, and the rest of the department members are Kyle Cable, Chase Sather, Brandon Kuhn, Austin Every, and Jesse Bolton. The, their mission statement is to communicate and inform an interactive community by promoting and networking through social media. And what they were in charge of was promoting on social media. They created a website. They surveyed students online. Um, they helped with the middle school presentation, and they helped with the merchant displays within the store. Lastly, we have human resources. The manager is Bailey Novoychek, and her team members are Carissa Bjornstead, Renee Horton, Dallas Lip, Morgan Wetzel, and Taylor Goins. Um, their mission statement is, our mission is to treat each, each person as a valued consumer, promote excellent customer service, and accommodate the needs of, trust, of trusted employees. Some things they were in charge of were scheduling all of the employees. Uh, they also helped create fifth grade presentations they developed a dress code, and also they created an entire employee handbook. So the remainder of our store, um, it's open through the 18th, and every day now after school will be open from 3 to 8 p.m. On Saturday the 12th, we were open from 9 to 4. So uh, We just want to thank you for letting us come in and talk a little bit about entrepreneurship as well as our school store, and we'd like to answer any questions that you guys might have for us. Are there any questions? Couple. So, how did your grand opening go, and did you design your own T-shirts? Was that part of your like promotion team? Um, yeah, the T-shirt was a long process. It, <laughs> <laughs> to put it lightly, yeah. But um, it was a few class periods, and it was just um, after we decided upon the name, it was just kind of coming up with a design that everybody wanted to agree on, and then it's after really design, nice. it's it was, cool. Like cool. It. Very yeah. cool. No so. pun intended. <laughs> 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 And then um, the grand opening went over pretty well as well. Everything ran smoothly. So. Oh, right. I love it when you guys come every year. And, and it's always like new ideas. And every year you think, oh, there's not no way they can come up with another name for the yeah, store. And they always, always do. Amazing. And it's always like you redo everything fresh. Oh, sorry. Every year. <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. And you're always so full of energy. And I love it. I love it. I have a question. How do you like choose one person or one group to dedicate your time and your efforts to for the fundraising, the recipient. You know, I, I like the Tyler one, that's awesome, but how did you come to that one? Um, well, we had the students in our class, we all came up with ideas like who to donate to. We had some big organizations like Children's Miracle Network, mm -hmm. but ultimately Tyler just like was the closest connection to us yeah. and we felt like we should help someone in our community. Yeah. He could, and just especially with his situation and losing his job and insurance, it was just, he was probably the best candidate for it. Yeah, Re reinvesting in your own, in your own students, it's awesome. Other questions or comments? Okay. Um, yes, I wondered, um, because I think a lot of you, your hearts must be in marketing, and it's fun to look at you as a group, but I'm watching each individual face and thanking you for this work. So we have on our agenda tonight a new course which is marketing research. And I wondered if there's one of you that would like to comment on what your thoughts about this is. Like, who of you Are they familiar? I don't know if they're familiar with that, though. Oh, maybe not. Mrs. Bresky told us a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, I think it would be a great course to take just because it'll, encur it'll encourage more students to be involved in DECA, and it'll make writing a 30-page project a <laughs> lot easier yeah. because when... I wrote my first project in my sophomore year. That was a challenge. I didn't really know what I was doing or where I was going with it. So I feel like if I had this marketing research class, it would have helped me a lot and I would have, 
I mean, not that it was bad to figure out things on my own and right. ask a bunch of questions, but I would have had a class to help me with that. Yeah, mentoring and guidance is good. Go ahead. Yeah, and another thing would be that not all students have access to things such as computers at home, so to be able to allow everybody to have the opportunity to compete in DECA, and it wouldn't just be the kids that have a little bit more free time or make time for it, so I think that would reach a bro uh, broader range of students at the high school. So yeah. Thank you. The other, uh, just the comment for all of you is that I think you often every, like Anita says, every year when you come, we're so happy to have you here, but I think you epitomize the head and the heart. The head runs the store and it figures out profits and communication and publicity. The heart says, what can we give back to community? And those are like, in this country, my most favoritest businesses and when I look at you and you're not even out of high school yet but you already have that in your heads and hearts I thank you for that um, and I thank you for your sponsors could they step forward I always ask my my mentors advisors? or my yeah so the advisors there Rescue. Rescue. there we are thank you <laughs> So to end the night, a lot of times when we have groups come and present, we usually have the token picture. So what I'm going <laughs> to ask is for you two to come in the middle behind the TV. If that group that's in the middle here could come forward, we're going to do a selfie. <laughs> but we want you to be in the background. So can we just turn around like this? I don't know who we is, but it's yeah. not me. Oh, they're going to be. Oh, you got to turn the camera. No. <laughs> oh, she got, you got to flip it. Flip flip it. it. Flip I don't it. do selfies. Mm. Maybe you should do it. That's so cute. Okay. Oh, God, this is not good. If you're in the front, get down. Oh, my God. No, you can push this button. I don't think we got a lot of experience with this. We're going to have to do it. This is the first ever selfie. What about the rest of us? Why can't we get in a two? Go get a two. Why can't we get in a two? All right. What do they call it? I don't know how good it turned out. We may be posting it. I'm going to tweet it out. Okay, we'll see what happens. That's a good picture of you too. So stay there and get that from okay. me. Oh, geez, you have to turn it around. <laughs> turn it around. Turn it around. Oh my! <laughs> and she's running this brick. What the heck? That's a great picture. Okay, here we go. Smiles. Yeah, we'll either Twitter it or Facebook it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have your store. Twitter and selfies. <laughs> We're trying. Social media. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah, we gotta waste. <laughs> I don't think I can tell that one. Gotta get used to it. Just absolutely. Okay. I don't usually like to get myself in the picture. Sure. Thank you very so. much for coming this evening. Yeah, I think that was my thing. It's first selfie. Okay. So. <laughs> so then we are moving on to um, new course presentations. Yes. Nine point two. New course proposals. Oh wait, 9.2 cooperative. Yep. New course proposals. That's what I have for 9.2. Oh. Cooperative uh -oh. agreements. Oh, I'm looking at your. I'm looking at the on, oh. the, on the oh. Dropbox. Oh yeah. Okay. You'll be next oh. after that, Mark. Sorry. I think it's because they had parent-teacher conferences. Okay. They switched it around. So, Huh? On this one? It's I know. Not. On, on this the, printed one? On the regular one? one it is, but on the scripted one. On the scripted mm -hmm. one, it looks like this. But oh, on yep. the regular one, okay. it's different. Just... Good evening. Are we out of line? <laughs> no, you're, 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 all you're online for what was post, uh, published, so let's go. Okay. Uh, the language arts department at the high school um, proposed two new courses for next year. One, a uh, combination 9-10 uh, language class that accelerates students faster through uh, the 9-10 curriculum. curriculum in one year so that their sophomore year they would take and then continue. Um, that one did not get approved, but the one that did get approved was the AP language and composition class. 
Uh, typically, the College Board suggests that honors or the AP language is done at the junior level and then literature at the senior level. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking for with adding. There are only two language AP classes um, offered by College Board, so now Holman High School will have both of them, which is a great opportunity for our kids. We, we have had some students take the AP language test, even though they did not take the class, but we feel that this will better prepare them for that assessment and then allow them to have the college credit they so desire. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they're very successful after going through our curriculum. So we're excited about that. It's just, it will be, well, we don't really know exactly. Juniors and seniors, probably the first couple of years, and then we'll see <coughs> after that. And I don't think this is on the consent this evening, but it is an opportunity for board members to ask any questions about that if you have, and then it will be on the next um, board for, meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And I think I noticed that it does provide for uh, the textbook and the materials. Again, this would be dependent upon student. We have schedule. so much of it already, just because when I teach the AP Lit class, I take two or three weeks at the end of that to teach the AP Lang um, mostly vocabulary words and how the test is set up and that sort of thing. And so we have a lot of the teacher materials already. Um, Whoever is going to teach it will have to get accredited, probably go to a workshop or a week long seminar in the summer just to learn about it. We have a couple of teachers that are very interested, one that has taught it before at a different school. So. I think that it will be successful right off the bat, and our kids typically do very well on that class. So, and those would class. be budgeted for those expenses. Would right, be part of right. That's part of the budget that's in the course proposal. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Could you just give me your names again? Karen Rooney. I'm sorry. No, I, teach, I, I uh, know them, but I forget. Yeah, <laughs> language arts at the high school. Thank you. And Colleen Toltzman, language arts. Thank you. Thanks for your work on this too. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Would this replace uh, like honors language 11 class? Our initial, good question. Our initial uh, thought was that the students that would take the 910 combination class would then as sophomores take honors and then it would replace college prep. For them. For them. We would for still those offer kids. college prep to right. students. Would it's, a, it's sort of a differentiated upper level writing course. Um, now, um, that's a good question because we'll have students that will still need to take nine their freshman year, 10 their sophomore year, honors their junior year. So they may have to take honors and this if they so choose. They may have to wait till their seniors. They might have to, you know, it, it's, it'll be a little tricky without the passing of that language 910 course. And, that would, and part of, I mean, it's difficult, you can imagine, for students to take two upper level English classes at the same time. So part of our design with that system was that that would be avoided, that students would be able to focus on that one course at a time, because it's possible that they could be in honors and AP language, um, depending on where, what terms we put AP language in right. at the same time, which is really complicated for them. And then as a senior, um, some students right now take college prep and AP, AP lit. lit together, mm -hmm. which is really a stretch sometimes for them. So this would have kind of opened up their ability to not take so much English at the same time overlapping so they could produce better work. They'll just have to make some decisions. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next is child development. <clears throat> I'm Cassie Ewald. I'm the family consumer science teacher at the high school. Um, big reason I really propose this class is right now we just have parenting and the course description says parenting from conception through teenage years which is in nine weeks kind of impossible in my eyes. <laughs> it is. Um, I taught this last year at Central uh, for a semester and I feel like parenting I still ran out of time and I also taught child development at the same time and it Parenting would be narrowed down from talking about parenting itself, are you ready to be a parent, what it takes to be a parent, guidance, and then behavioral issues, and then going from conception through two-year-olds. And then ch child development would pick up from three to 12-year-olds. 
So it really picks up on physical, intellectual, cognitive, and behavior dis or, um, behaviors. And we also talk about career choices, how um, different types of child, are, and I mean, there's a huge range of them that kids wouldn't even think of either that we will research. And also with careers, um, just job opportunities too. And um, with the project you're looking at, this would be their final, because as we go through it, we first start by learning about all the um, developments they go through, and we'd actually take like anecdotal records from videos that we would have to get, because it is required by WTC to have anecdotal records done, so we would properly learn how to do that. Um, and through WTC, we get three credits if they took parenting and child development and had a, um, I think for their grading, it's an 89%. They'd have to get, I um, mean, child development to get the three credits. Um, but as we go through, after we get through the behaviors and all the developments, we actually do, it's more of a teaching standpoint at that point then too. We go into puppetry, art, science, and actually create projects, and they actually present them to us as the classroom then. We kind of pretend to be seven, eight, three-year-olds as they want us to, and we actually do the product projects. They actually follow through and teach us things. And then we also then create these file folders that you have in front of you, and we actually take them to, um, this one is designed for kindergartners, and we took it to the kindergarten, and they actually played the game with kindergartners to see if they actually understood it, and they actually got to sit down and like be teachers with them. And so the kindergartners then gave, gave them feedback too if they liked the game, if they didn't like the game. And some were very, very vocal in saying why they didn't like it too. And I thought it was very eye-opening for some. So um, my hopes this year though is possibly do kindergartners and second graders to kind of get um, a couple year difference to see how they would feel about that. So we do a file folder for kindergartners and then possibly a different type of game or lesson for second graders so they can kind of expand their knowledge on that. And then hopefully, um, I know it's been talked about is getting a daycare in the high school. If that ever happened, we could also just take our students and put them in the daycare setting and do our anecdotal records through there instead of having to use videos and actually get the hands-on experience and then also just having hand-on experience through the, <coughs> like the workforce through that for an hour and a half a day. So that's my hopes. And this went through the curriculum council and all of that and was brought forward. Yep. So. Any questions? A question just about the, the child development piece. Do you look at abnormal development or trauma stuff at all? Much? We do more of the um, like birth effects. Um, okay. We do that in parenting. So okay. we have we know the birth effects and how it affects cognitive abilities. Okay. So by the time you get to child development, it, we can do more research, career research type things. Okay. Yep. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. And then market research. Um, the class the marketing department is proposing is market research. Um, these are the current classes that we have offered with the grades, um, marketing and business concept being our freshman, sophomore class, then advanced sports, market research, and entrepreneurship. Um, market research, the prerequisite would be marketing business concepts in advance. Um, course vision, why we feel this course is in need. Um, we feel it's directly in line with what's going on in business and industry right now with companies needing data and really focusing on research. It'd be a two-term course offered to juniors and seniors who have taken um, marketing business concepts and advanced marketing. Um, they will already have a basic background knowledge on research and advanced marketing. We do a promotional plan with our partner, um, Ultra Federal Credit Union, so they've done a mini project, but this will be an extension. Um, topical outline for the class, students will select a local business, they'll design a research study, um, conduct the study, analyze it, prepare a plan, prepare a budget, and present their findings and evaluate the results. So they'll go through an entire um, business plan project, working with the business community. Our two upper level classes, sports marketing and entrepreneurship, we have huge partnerships with the business community, and we vision that this class would also continue that, working with our local um, business partners, even to help teach certain sections. Um, for example, the budget section, um, we vision that Ultra would be in helping with that, sitting and working with students and with the one-to-one -one technology. Um, they'd be able to do their project right in class and meet with a business person um, or even go out to their businesses. Um, community partnership, just meeting with the community, doing primary and secondary research, data analysis, working on presentation skills. 
um, finance and the budget and promotion. Um, we feel it meets the standards, both career and tech education, marketing management, entrepreneurship, the writing, speaking and listening, and the math standards. And then just our rationale is by the time students hit the end of their junior year, they have taken 75% of their course requirements, and we just feel this would be a nice addition for the students in the marketing program. Several of them um, want to take additional classes, are going on to um, additional schooling, and we feel this is a needed skill that right now we currently don't have time in our current curriculum to really get in depth with market research. Um, and then the cost, um, no additional cost. We're requesting 10 hours of um, curriculum time, and there are several resources through MarkEd. Our State Association of Marketing Education um, is a member of MarkEd, so we have that service for free. And then, of course, a partnership with our community volunteers. Okay, open up for question. questions. I have a question. Yeah. I just wondered, um, I love the idea. First of all, and I wondered um, when we look at Holman compared to other um, school districts that mm -hmm. are comparable to us, is this something that we need? Do you see it happening in other districts? Um, other districts, some of them incorporate it in um, like a marketing two class. Holman is kind of unique. We have. Um, we start marketing our freshman year, and some high schools don't actually have it available till their junior and senior year to students. Um, a lot of classes um, teach something similar, or schools teach something similar with a partnership with like AP Stats. So that was also something that's kind of been talked about or looked at if we can do something together to work with them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I have a question to draw more students when, you, when you're talking about different um, employment options that you may not normally think of with marketing can you give a couple examples of that of how you might draw in more interest that you may not think marketing would apply but it really could through having the market research course yeah um, you know I think just working with um, business partners and also letting students know that marketing is a part of every job and every career and that this pro project or class would be beneficial for them no matter what career they want to go into mm -hmm. um, whether they team up with uh, somebody that owns their own vet clinic or if they're interested in physical therapy and they team up with one of the hospitals but just learning how to because market research and marketing is a part of every organization and just learning how to um, gather data analyze it present it mm -hmm. um, and working with the local business community. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Any others? Thank you, Heather. Okay. Again, Thanks. this will be like the others will be on next month's okay. agenda. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. <laughs> then moving on um, cooperative agreement <laughs> with girls swimming. Good evening. Um, my name is Mark Englert. I'm the activities director for the district. And I'm here tonight because WIA has a process in place that causes us to reflect every two years on how successful our co-op programs are doing and to look in and see do we need to continue that co-op or are we maybe ready to break off on our own and have a separate program. Um, so I'm looking to renew our co-op agreement for the 16-17 and the 17-18 years. A uh, little background on our program. We like the program to have about 25 to 30 athletes involved in it to consider to have a strong varsity program. Currently for this past year, we were at 27. In a typical year, Holman makes up about two-fifths of that. Alaska makes up about two-fifths and Aquinas usually is one-fifth of the program. Uh, this year was a little bit unusual year for Holman. We only had seven athletes involved, so uh, it's clear that if we want to provide this opportunity for our students that it's important to be in this co-op. And we've been very successful. Uh, we win most of our dual meets in large invites. We always have athletes and relay teams that do very well. And we had one athlete make it to state this year and take 12th in the 100 uh, butterfly. So. We have a lot of success uh, with the program between the three schools and uh, uh, feel it's a need to continue this. Are there any questions anyone has about the program? Any questions? Okay, and this will be on the next, next board meeting agenda. 
and it will be approved then. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Mark. Thank you. If you have any questions in between, please feel free to. <clears throat> and then employee handbook language revisions, Melissa. So, <clears throat> what we're getting back into the swing of meetings again. So, um, we'll have language coming pretty frequently again. But um, so, there's five items tonight. I'm going to bulk the first three because they really have the same change in the language. <coughs> um, they all, the first three um, focus on post employee benefits, specifically the unused um, sick leave payout for teachers, administrators, and supervisors, those three groups only. You may recall last spring we brought some language forward um, under these sections for administrators and supervisors and um, went back and had some more discussions with employee groups. So. Since that time, we've met with the employee relations team. Um, we've met with the administrators, the supervisors, um, and had lots of meetings and input from the teachers on these language changes. Um, and based on that input, we have the language coming forward to you tonight. Um, so the main change in the language is how um, this unused sick leave is paid out at retirement for these three groups of employees. Currently, it is cash. Um, so it is taxable um, and for some employees um, that is taxed very largely because it's a very large amount of money. So um, the proposal is to move to um, the form of payment in a TSA, tax sheltered annuity, um, if the amount is over $2,000. Anything under $2,000 would just be paid out in cash. Um, the benefit of moving to a TSA as the form of payout is um, we don't have to pay that 7.65% um, FICA tax, um, either the district or the employee as they're receiving that payout. So um, it goes into account that they can take out um, as they choose or, or when they choose. Um, if it's a large enough amount that it's too much that they, um, they reach that maximum that they're allowed to put in for the year, we can hold off and put the rest in the following year. So. Um, so they receive that benefit as well. Um, the two um, differences in the changes is the effective date of the language. For teachers, um, we're proposing a July 1st, 2016 language change. This would allow anyone wanting to retire in this current school year to go out under the current language. Um, so they're, they'd be able to retire under the language that we went into the school year with. So there would not be a change. Um, for administrators and supervisors, we're proposing a June 1st, 2016 effective date. Um, the reason being for that, it would allow administrators um, or supervisors the opportunity to still retire within this school year, um, but either pick the current cash option before June 1st or between June 1st and June 30th, the TSA option, um, and still give us an ample amount of time to um, post and um, hire for their position if there is someone retiring. So, any questions on those three pieces? Any questions? That did go come to the uh, Personnel and Governance Committee, and we recommended moving it forward. It did, as Melissa said, underwent a lot of change and um, a lot of discussion over the past year. So, we do appreciate mm -hmm. that, and all those on your team who help deliver this, so thank you. All right, um, the next piece then is um, related to paid vacation leave. This really is just documentation of our past practice for our hourly paid employees. Um, there was nothing documented that says, how do we if, um, allocate vacation to an employee who perhaps is a school year employee right now, has been with us for 10 years, and then moves into a year round position and becomes eligible for vacation. Um, our past practice has always been to treat that that they receive their 10 years of service credited and would start wherever on that table um, that the vacation days falls. So this really just documents that so employees are aware and payroll knows how to treat those employees coming in as well. Questions? Okay, thank you. All right, and the last piece, um, this is kind of follow up from last year. Last year we made a change um, of this exact language, but in the teacher um, portion of the handbook, um, this falls under the hourly employee language. Um, what this states is that um, we added a line indicating that if there's funds available, we 
consider the step movement. Um, under Act 10, we can't bargain um, the distribution of wages. So um, we needed to make sure we had this line in here that indicates that if there's an opportunity, that that is something that is considered. So um, we added this for the teachers last year, and this is just follow up and clean up to make sure it's in all parts of the handbook. Those will be on the next round. Yep, the next January 11th January for consent. 11th, um, agenda. So thank, thank you. you. If you have any questions in between, please feel free to ask those. So then the next item is budget input variables. Hello. Hello. Hi. On the um, November 20 third board meeting, I presented the budget input variables um, for us to get board approval and use in the revised five-year forecast model. Um, a reminder to the board, we um, contract with PMA, which is a public advisory group, to help us um, renew the forecast model every December, January, as we work through um, what we'll bring to you for the next budget cycle. Um, following that presentation, the board asked um, what it would take in the salary increase percentage to grant step and lane. And so this item is back on the report and discussion um, and tonight's agenda to reply to that question. Um, going back and looking at prior year, uh, the base wage negotiations work that we did last spring and summer to come to the July 1st, 2015 negotiated contract agreements, um, it would take one and a half percent to grant step and lane using that base wage data um, from prior year. <coughs> and so I bring that answer to your question tonight about one and a half percent. And what is the dollar amount of that? I have it here, just a minute. <laughs> it's a um, one and a half percent applied to all employee groups is a year over year change of $382,000. And what is it just for the um, HEA? I don't have the, um, it's a difference I can give you the increase. The increase is, do you have that right there? I just Chris? need a calculator. Yeah. yeah. So it's an increase from 17822000 to 18089000 I have the sum of the total, so Chris, if you want to. See the difference of, do you, we can, I have my wrong phone. I'm sorry, I applied it to That's all okay. employee 17, groups. Or, I'm sorry, 18, 18, 18. 18. 089515 minus 1782 183. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 182183. So 267. Yep. And that's just on the teacher wages increase, and that does not include the 14.25% FICA and WRS applied. Just, yep. Right. Mm -hmm. As a comparison for all groups, the increase at um, the proposed input variable of 0.25% is $63,739 year-over-year versus the 382438 if we used a 1.5% increase in 1617. Okay. Well, and I guess I'll start um, with the questions or comments because I asked that question. And I, I know that I asked for going back, and I've got the last three years, I have asked Dr. Mueller for the previous years. As a board and as a district, we've always talked about um, our budgeting. A lot of the things we do in our budgeting is more of a standard and incremental and, and more, um, for example, when we talk about referendums, we say we want to have kind of a standardized level so that we're not hitting all these highs and lows, ups and downs. And the input variable came to us because a few years ago as a board, as you remember, we said, well, we don't really feel like we have a lot of input in the budget prior to it going beyond a certain point. 
And so what happened one year was we had input. We didn't necessarily like what we had done. And when we went to try to change it, we got some pushback from that. So I'm what concerns me is I'm not happy personally or professionally with the .25. I don't, I think that that is a, a valley that isn't fair to any of our employees in any of the groups. And sometimes questions get asked and the HEA is out there because it's the largest group and has the most financial impact. And I would say my opinion is that none of our groups um, should be only increased at 0.25. So that's why I ask those questions. Um, the, it seemed to me that if we looked at the HEA and did these steps and lanes, that would be a natural thing to do with that group. I think the onus would be on us to figure out what else we could do with the other groups. If it's a 1.5, then in all fairness, we should possibly be looking at a 1.5 for all of our groups. And, you know, that kind of thing. I was just trying to figure out what it would cost so that we could move forward. But I'm not prepared to vote for the input variable um, later on on the agenda. I'd like us as a board to have more comments and discussion about this, and I would like to see us do something more even to what we've done in the past so that we aren't doing those ups and downs. And, and I say that in all understanding that in a couple years we may be seeing the CPI at 4.5, and I would say the same thing that that's a high that we can't afford to do, so we should really try to budget along an even line so that we kind of know where we're at, and if it's a dollar amount or whatever, but I just agree with Jay Clark, those highs and lows are not a necessarily positive thing for us to be looking at. We should be looking at more of an even kind of budgeting. So it is on our agenda for this evening, and um, if you have questions, or we can have some discussion questions now. Is the question to make a movement to pull it off and hold for more discussion and have more discussion between the board, or are we going to have that here? We can kind of discuss it here since it's a report. It's an opportunity mm -hmm. to ask questions. That would be pulling it off would be an opportunity to, when we do the consent agenda, we could have it considered separately, and then at that time we could support it, vote it down, table it, you know, one of any number of things that we wanted to do as a board. <coughs> but since Julie's here, you, if you have questions of her, you could ask them at this time. But. And I would like to remind the board that the .25 is based on the projected CPIU for July 1, 2016, um, because that's trending towards zero, um, and which could eventually have a negative impact on our revenue at some point um, at the state. I'm not disagreeing, I'm just telling you where the number comes from, um, and that's why it's put into the model as a conservative um, number for increases based on the we just, CPIU. We just want you know, the public to understand the input variable in all the past years was developed off, or the past three years was developed off the CPIU. <coughs> it wasn't like all of a sudden this year we decided, you know what, we just wanna make it so no one get, you know, nothing happens, mm -hmm. so I think, um, the discussion is a very important one. Um, the thing that we're going to have to think about is when we put that input variable in there, then there will be money in other areas that we're going to have to look at, possibly, depending on what our revenue that we get is, as to, well, then where do you, where, you, you know, you got to kind of rob Peter to pay Paul kind of thing um, sometimes in the area. But, you know, in Holman, we've been fortunate where our revenue has gone up slightly you know, in the years to handle this, the wage increases and so on. So that's It is also positive. an input variable that we can use and run various scenarios. So if we start conservative and use other scenarios that the board wishes to see, we can talk and discuss on the output. But until we have a decision on what we're supposed to be using in the forecast model, it's difficult for us to communicate any output for future decisions. But if we... If we put that variable in now, we've basically said, yes, this is the yes. variable we like. Mm -hmm. And then, to, then it would even be more difficult to pull that out and say, you know, where are you going to get the money then to do that? Where we're saying, before we even go down this road, we think the input variable should be X. And I'm not saying what it should be. Look, we're uh, 
is it input ver this input variable based on con con uh, consumer yeah. price index? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that some degree of consistency for the last five years you've done the computer uh, price index? That we've used that number, but the number has not been is not consistent. What I'm saying, if 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 that if the standard is com uh, the consumer price index standard to in order to maintain the wages at a current uh, earning level the last five or six years. And now just because the, the consumer index is low, that's not a reason to change it. We've been consistent with the, computer, with the mm -hmm. consumer index all the way along. If the, if the consumer index is lower, then why shouldn't the increase be lower? I, I have a so question. So are you ready to give an 8% if that's what the consumer price index is? Well, that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah, I'm saying no. no. I'm, saying no, no. Back no. I'm saying if it's been three around 300,000 the last few years, should we just be looking at budgeting at that instead of and I'll seeing I'll what percentage help. that is? Right. That's what I would be more comfortable doing, budgeting that dollar amount and figuring out what that percentage would be, because it is more difficult if we if we budget at a percentage rate, it's more difficult to then change that percentage rate and come up with that money once that figure is put in rather than you know the 382 so we have 382 and or whatever the figure was last year um, we have that in place and just trying to keep that consistent even for the trying to attract and retain employees no matter what the CPI you had, you is. If you have 5% increase in, in consumer price index that would mean that everything's costing more and gas prices were very high and stuff. As a board, we would say no. <coughs> we wouldn't be able to match that. I, I doubt that very much. I don't know. <laughs> if we only got a 2% increase from the state, it would be very difficult for us to say yes. Don't well, if it was a, based on the consumer price index, it would be that, it wouldn't be too. Well, we wouldn't be getting that much more, though, from the state. Because what, but this Explain. year, the second year, aren't we getting more, too, in, in aid at the second year of the governor's budget? We're getting an increase in categorical aid from 150 per pupil to 250 per pupil. I can't tell you what will happen to it the next year. Right. <laughs> and that's always that's that's hard <laughs> for I have a question, I guess, because I have a lot of questions. Um, but the, 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 the discussion on both sides is really important to me. Um, is there a timeline for this that becomes problematic if we don't decide this by a certain time? Or, or can, like the suggestion has been made, can we pull this out and keep talking about it? Um, personally, I think I'd like that. <laughs> and then just to have time to digest. Um, mm -hmm. Because many good comments have been made from, you know, um, what we do for our staff to the consumer price index. I mean, all of those are things that I'd like to wrap my head around, and I don't know that I want to do that in this one meeting. So, so if that's what I'm asking, which item would want? <laughs> can you help? I mean, which one? Are, yeah. Or in. Or Jay. Go ahead, Jay. I would encourage you not to defer this. You approved a budget development calendar based on reaching certain benchmark dates so that if we had to make staffing decisions, <coughs> we'd know that well enough in advance to let staff know rather than waiting till the end of the year. If we were going to offer new courses or not have money to offer new courses <coughs> at the high school, we'd be able to know that earlier rather than later. Those on the board long enough to know when we made some wholesale changes to the budget development process, um, it was not only this early input by the board, but it was accelerate everything months earlier so that the die wasn't already cast by the time the board made its decisions. Deferring would mean that the die is already cast, would in, in fact undo what the board has attempted to do. So I would strongly encourage you not to delay. So I, I'm a little bit confused. So any delay what you're saying is not a good thing. So a delay of one more meeting is even not a good thing to allow more digestion of this. Is that? Perhaps I'm I misinterpreted what the board just, wanted when we changed, went through wholesale changes. If, if, the, if the board's in a different place right. in, in terms of um, 
timeliness of decisions versus um, digesting information to make decisions, mm -hmm. then um, go, uh, go ahead and, and make the delays. Um, based on the good rationale that the board provided several years ago, I, I would encourage you not. The but second thing I'd say is these are input variables. Um, these are not, as was quoted earlier, the variables we would like. I would say to you as I look at these budget input variables, there's many things I dislike. They are not what we would like. They're a starting point which allows the administration to go back, use these input variables to give you some output so you know what the balance of total revenue is versus total expenses, so you're in a more informed position then to go back and adjust input variables if you need be. And for those who were here when we went through the input variables the first time, do you remember trying to decide whether or not we were going to increase staffing? Yes. Oh my goodness, it took us uh, two, maybe three months. And finally, I think everybody came to peace with the idea that these are just the, imp this is just the starting point. This isn't the destination. This is the starting point on a budget development journey. But that I do think no. when we tried to change the staffing, yeah, it was said to us, those were the input variables yes. that were approved back in December. That is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. That's why and I'm so, so afraid to put this in writing now. So this, because of that, I think is why there is some concern about what happened. I'd encourage I you to decide on either 0.25, 1.5, or something in between tonight and let us move forward. Can I ask I, a follow-up question about this, though? Yeah. Um, I understand what you're saying in terms of timelines. I think they're very important. And, and yes, we agreed upon timelines. But when an issue comes up that makes us pause, a bit. Um, I can also be open to adjusting a timeline, not by months and months and months, but a couple of weeks or the next board meeting to get more information about this. And when you speak to those of the board who have been on here forever, you're probably not talking to me, but I'm on the board too. Mm -hmm. And I need a little bit of time to digest that and make the best decision for my community, for my staff. Um, and, and so my original question is, not should we do it or not do it, is how much harm comes if we put it off for one more meeting? And I'm leaning toward how much harm can <coughs> it be? I'm not talking about going on and on and on. If somebody, those of you who have been here for a long time, if you could respond to me, and, and, and you too. Um, I need to vote with information. And tonight I've heard a lot of good sides. Anybody well, I think sticking to a process and sticking to something consistent is really good as far as time frames. But when you're looking at a drastic difference in what we've seen in percentages, like you said, that make us look at it, I think we need to take more time and wonder how that's going to impact, think how that will impact, you know, our staff. So I, I don't know. I think we should hold off and talk about this a little bit more. I argue. My point is that it's not a dramatic, it's not a dramatic increase. It's it's the the price, the compute, the consumer price index. So they have. If you give them, if the price index was went up 1.75 uh, percent three four years ago. <clears throat> And you gave them the 1.75% to maintain that ability to buy things at that level. If the price index is 0.25% and you give them that, you still maintain the same level of purchasing power. It's not a matter of percentages. It's a matter of how much more things cost every year. If things cost 2% more in 2007, you give them 2% so they can maintain the purchase power. If it only goes up, the consumer index only goes up 0.25% in one year, and you give them the 0.25% to maintain their purchasing power, it's the same thing. You end up, you end up keeping pace with the ability to earn or to spend money the same way they did the year before. It's not a matter of percentage, it's a matter of how much, how much uh, goods and services rise in cost every year. <clears throat> if the goods and services went down 5%, what would you do then? You know, I'd, yeah, that's why we should. Um, a comment and a question. First, a comment and, and certainly appreciate Mr. Clark's comments. I know it's a little different, but we have precedents for delaying. Just this last year, we delayed the budget given all the things that were going on in, in Madison. So it is not without precedents that we have not delayed. 
So, you know, to me, I appreciate the comments and timeliness and getting information out, but a, a delay is not unprecedented. It, it's slightly different, but I think it's similar. Uh, the question I have is, as we look at these input variables and we're looking at a projected salary increase, which now I'm putting my kind of my finance budgeting together, we're looking at a, a budgeting number for an expense category. Mm -hmm. What are we budgeting for the revenue side of the equation and how does that compare? Because as we look at, obviously, you know, the question before us is, is where do we kind of want to have an estimate of expense? To me, I kind of need to know what the estimate of the revenue is to know if I have it to spend to begin with because I, I agree that 0.25 looks terribly low as a, as a small number. Um, but if you're telling me that we're estimating our revenues going up 0%, then, you know, as a board, we're going to have to come back to, you know, Dr. Mueller's comment of where do we get it from and have those conversations, which I don't think any of us are prepared to have tonight, back to the no. delay question. And, and so to me, this is a much bigger, deeper, broader issue than just throwing some input variables out because when I look at a budget, I need to look at revenue and expenses in order to make a good decision on either one. Yeah. And so do we have an estimate of a revenue? Yes, we do. Julie, would you please go to page, uh, you know where I'm talking about, the input variable, uh, revenue input variables at the okay. top of the Oops. page. Too far. My and I can't is. remember the exact percentage, perhaps uh, Julie will be able to remember. Um, of our operational revenue that comes from the revenue limit formula. If you go to the third line down, it says the per pupil revenue limit increase. Does everybody see the dollar amount in there? Yes. The zero. Okay. That's about 90, that's about 90, it's over 90% of our revenue is defined by that value. And so what about the increase in student? because you're not telling me that we're going to have a Correct. We're increasing percent. staffing equivalent to the increase in students, which will drive up staffing costs at least equivalent to the increase in students, if not more. So can you make that larger because I can't see it? I would remind you here, too, that what we're doing right now is almost evaluating the output variables, mm -hmm. which when the board approved the budget development process, they approved first establishing uh, some input variables, allowing administration then to take those back, plug those all into, you can see the numerous input variables we have, to generate some output for which the board could make some further decisions. And we're also seeing a 4.5% increase in valuation? Correct. That's based on the current increase in valuation that we received this past October. And what are we, and the, so the 335 revenue limit adjustment is only based on new students? The 335 is the new referendum for facilities and um, transportation. Then can you go back to the other, I think it's on the first page, the health insurance? What are we estimating? Zero. 2% on dental, is that what that is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The health, in health insurance, um, as I stated last board meeting, we have a zero in there um, with the anticipated implementation of a HSA plan design. The increase or decrease in premium would be offset by the increase in HSA contribution. And so that's why we're using a 0% in that line. And in line with that, we're also increasing deductibles? I do not know the plan design for the HSA plan. We're working through that right now. <coughs> Our I goal do. is to have a net zero impact for em employer cost with a decrease in premium and an increase in HSA contribution for the employees that um, are eligible and select plan four. What if we took this one variable out? I don't think that really would help, would it? If it if I was thinking that same thing. If you took the one variable out, what you'd be in effect doing is treating it as 0% increase for the time being. Mm -hmm. It would just stay flat 
and then you would evaluate the whole without having had to make any statement on the input variable, and then you could come back and look at it. So we would just run the model at a 0% increase without you saying do it at a 0% increase, which I sense is the anxiety that lingers here is <laughs> having to say something about the salary increase. So in the past, we have budgeted with additional dollars at the end. Because, and so I, I'm not sure what this, with the input variables, are we aware of where we're at? No, not at this time. And I put this input variable that you've always just plugged in that the difference in consumer. Pricing. That was part of Act 10. So that's just been since Act 10. In the past, it's been a 3.8% increase compensation and benefits. And honestly, the, well, it may be even different than that, but pretty typically right in that range. And that included health insurance. So in reality, the compensation part of that was smaller than the 3.8%. Probably closer to the 1, 1 1.5, you know, number that we're looking at. And I would imagine. My instincts tell me that's probably where we'll end up again, mm -hmm. even if we have if we have this 0.25 there. I think the other mm -hmm. thing I'm looking at is part of the um, compensation model team is again avoiding these ups and downs because as we start looking at different ways of compensation, um, we you know you it just don't want to necessarily have that dip so. But they want to I'll, I'll say one more time, and that is if you use the price index, it's not up and down. <laughs> if you adjust, if you put in 0.25 and the index is 0.25 and you adjust it to 3.5, you're forcing it to be up and down to be consistent with the price index. You should put in there what the price index is. That's what we, that makes sense to me for, uh, for a, uh, a place to start. I think you're saying that the method you're saying, well, the method then isn't up and down because you're using the consumer price index, but the bottom line is way up and down. Like 63,000 versus 382,000 is way up and down. So the method wouldn't be up and down. No, it'd be a consistent method to Correct. use the CPI. The dollar amount is way out of whack. <coughs> but that's, <coughs> that's because it costs more or less. To I'm not disagreeing with that, but I'm just saying that the bottom, I mean, remember when Chuck was on the board and Chuck would say <coughs> when he got on the facility committee and we have to keep the taxes level because that is what people want. And, and he, we had a really well-developed plan for facility and not saying we don't now because we do, but really <laughs> a long-term plan. But you, you kind of had to plan out so that the taxes weren't going to go up and down. And we kind of kept them when this referendum is paid off, we're going to have this one and you have to keep that, them that's level. A, that's a completely well, different metric. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's a dollar. It's a dollar amount. It's not a method. It's a dollar well, amount. And if you keep, so you keep the earning level, the, the, the earning potential the same over five years, so year to year, that's being very consistent. So if you just tell people every year, you're going to get whatever the consumer price index is, no right. matter what it I think is. Right. They're going to look forward to that. I don't think they will. I'd rather have employees looking forward to it. And I realize we have a lot of variables of our own to work with. Well, that we have to work within, but at eleven thousand, realistically, me, my math goes screwy here, Jay. At eleven thousand dollars per student, we're spending per student in the school district. That means for every ten students, we're spending one hundred ten thousand dollars. For every twenty students, we're spending almost a quarter of a million dollars, which means eighty percent of that is is wages and benefits. So for every two, it's 20 students in a school district, we're spending $176,000 just in benefits and wages for 20 students. I think we've always acknowledged, though, as mm -hmm. a school district, that our staff is our greatest resource. They are. They're who deliver the curriculum in the, the classrooms. So, yeah, I, I don't think that is any surprise to anyone. I agree, too. I agree, too. But, again, you know, we have... We have a 95% or, or 90 plus retention rate. Must be doing something. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a question. And with a 0.25% raise on a $36,000 salary, they'd make $90, $90 a year more next year. 
That's sad. Well, what if what if price in, what if Gary, consumer price would, would, went on, down two hundred dollars? That's sad. Ninety dollars. <coughs> I I don't I'm not going to argue about it. To me, that's sad. We can disagree about that. I I that's insulting to our staff. And I wish it wasn't that way, but it's our hands are tied by the state in so many ways that. Um, Just a couple of comments and throughout, maybe a crazy idea, but you know, I, I certainly agree with some of the comments that sad. I, I do want to remind everybody that there are a lot of folks who are tied to the CPI, including a lot of our fixed income, Social Security recipients, and that's what they are going to be looking at, and they, they don't have a choice. But that being said, I still think it's sad. Could My biggest hang up here is that I don't want to give false hope either direction. I don't want to throw an input variable out there and then three months or six months from now when that budget is being finalized going, now what do we do? We've, we've said this and, and where's the money coming from? But I, I do think that we really should, that that number is, is scary low to me as well. Is there a way that the budget input variables, and I know this is extra work, could you run two scenarios for us, one at 0.25 and one at 1 1.5? I thought we were going to do that. Paul. Sure. Um, as long as there's one variable that's changing, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy. The reality is that if it's some variables are interdependent, <coughs> and so you end up with this exponential growth. If you got three and you want to run variables on three, it, it is truly it follows an exponential curve. But if it's one, we can do that. I don't know what anybody else thinks about that, but that just gets us more data again, gives us the exactly. opportunity yeah. to, gives them to take opportunity a look to at it. Forward. Yes, because I think at least I am feeling like I, I need more data, more time, more of that as well. Um, and I'm not opposed to 1.5 percent. I'm trying to make make a yep. trying to make, give a couple yeah. things some clarity. I, I just wanted to make a comment on the CPI part of it. You know, and doing a little. I haven't done all the research on the CPI, but if you talk about what though that those goods and the goods are that they're assessing as far as inflation. Um, there's some question about whether or not all those goods are really reflective of what it costs to live in our community and buy groceries and pay for rent and so it doesn't necessarily mean because the CPI is low that everything's going to be lower and you're not going to have to pay more money in rent and food and clothing and taxes and whatnot. The CPI may not be the ticket as far as a number to use and there's a lot of research out there. Um, the labor market is saying that you might be steering yourselves incorrectly if you're going to be using the CPI strictly to drive um, payment to labor because there's issues there. And I think we need to evaluate that. What I hear there is if it's 1.5 or above, it's fine. But if it's 0.25, it must be wrong. That's I'm not I saying that. I think, I think we're using a number. Um, we're, we're, we have a false sense of what the economy and what the market is really reflecting on how people live their life and how much it costs to live in our communities. But we used that number the last two years. It was but that doesn't mean it's the right one. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it doesn't mean it's the right one to use, nor is it better for our families and our communities and our employees. I'm just saying we used it the last two years and now it's wrong. Well, I mean, Tim? Just a couple of quick comments, and, and I don't understand the CPI well enough either. I do think it's, it's very heavily driven round down right now because of the price of gasoline. Right which exactly. doesn't mean some of these other other yeah. things aren't going up. Exactly. And I think that has an impact from it. And you know, the, the CPI may be the wrong number, but that's a gift from our friends in Madison that <laughs> we have to deal with. So whether we like it or not, that's the number we've got to, got, to, got to work with. Now, that being said, do I think it's the right number? No, but it's, that's out of our control, unfortunately. And I think the two medical centers in town in La Crosse just talked about raising their rates. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Isn't it over 3%? And that's going to be one of the largest mm -hmm. purchases that a lot of our employees make. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. so, Kate? I guess my question is, <laughs> I love the conversation, really. I've, I've always loved the conversation because I always take so much of it home with me. But I feel like we're at a point right now in the meeting to say where do we go from here. I really would like some more time, but I'm open for asking for how to, what does that look like tonight to get some more time. Second follow-up question is, I don't want time to translate into forever. 
Mm -hmm. but I need knowledge time and I want to digest this. Um, so can somebody help me with those, what those would, steps I would run it at one point. I would run it at one point. So I think the answer is when we come to consent agenda items, we, somebody should ask to have it pulled out separately and then a motion should be made and mm -hmm. as to what direction we want to do. It could be running two at 1.5. It could be to just postpone everything. It could be, you know, to approve it and then approve it or approve it and defeat it. It could be any of those number of things. So we can get to that unless we have more questions. And the item on the consent agenda, can you repeat that for the public who might be following along? It's under item 10.4, the budget input variables. So as a board member, then, if you want to continue this discussion, we should have that pulled out mm -hmm. um, independ ind individually when we get to consent agenda. So, but for the thing of time, let's move on to Julie has the establishment of community service fund, fund 80. <clears throat> As you know, we had a daycare close in town, and we brought um, preschool and um, <coughs> a new adventure into um, the elementary school at Viking. Um, in order for the school district to, to um, account for the revenue and expenses for daycare, um, the school board needs to establish a fund 80. I don't believe Holman has ever had a fund 80, um, but all the expenses for daycare or um, other community programs do run through a separate fund. Um, they have to be separated from the general fund, um, most specifically because they do not contribute to like shared cost aid from the, um, from the State Department. So I ask you tonight to um, approve the establishment of Fund 80, the Community Service Fund. And in January, I will be bringing, um, we're still working on budget because as you know, it was a, a quick turnaround um, by lots of hard work by many people to get those um, students and families um, in place. Um, so with budget revisions for the entire budget um, that I had planned to bring in January, I'd like to also bring the Community Service Fund Fund 80 budget um, to your attention at that time. Any questions about that? Tim? Yes, a question in the, in the past, I know we have not had this. Are there any other items that not once we've established this fund that we could look at additionally to move into this Fund 80? I guess I'm not sure what historically um, Holman has considered offering. Um, there's restrictions within Fund 80. I know that DPI um, kind of cracked down on things within Fund 80 several years ago, but they are programs that are supposed to be um, available to the community, and so um, you have to separate that out from your um, primary and secondary education uh, revenue and expenses. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly. I know I've talked to some other districts that do run their before and after school care through their Fund 80 program. Um, i trying to remember. Well, they actually provide the, the before and after school programs the districts yep. do? Yes. Um, um, there, there's not, I don't think there's a lot, in, like in our communities around here, the Y has provided that surround care and supported districts. Um, other districts also bring in a provider. It might not be the Y, but another provider prov to, um, so we would contract, or a district could contract that care within this facility. Um, I think things like, I'm sorry, Chris, I was gonna just say, I think some districts, if they have an outdoor swim or a swimming pool, they may have um, summer or um, year-round swimming lessons that community residents have access to and pay for and pay, pay a fee. So programming that's outside of free and appropriate public education within the general fund that all community members would have access to, um, not restricted to the students enrolled in the school, um, can be um, explored through Fund 80. I know sometimes in West Salem when I used to help with the um, facility use things, um, sometimes the Fund 80 would be used to pay for facility use for community groups who if we charge them a fee, instead of actually charging them a fee, the fee would be charged, like run through Fund 80. 
I do know in, in some more rural districts or smaller districts, they don't have something like the YMCA or those the programming outside. So they'll have someone within the school district that does some public relations and actually works with the community to provide the yoga class or the cooking class within their school facilities. And then all the fees and all of that organization, the, the fees for that position, because they're organizing the community connections and so on, and then also for the fees that are for those courses are run through the Fund 80. And that I learned that from uh, Greg, actually, Krieger, who's joined us. They did some of that in Rylander. So thanks, Greg. Yeah. So any other questions? I just want to say thank you to Dr. Mueller um, and Julie for all the work that you did on that, turning that around um, oh. as quickly, and, and Mr. Me. Clark, too, as quickly as you did. And um, Sue. And, and Sue. Sue, yes. And thank you. And everybody. Jeff, yeah. But I, it, it does take a leader, and having oh. you in that leadership role and saying, let's do something, we're going to do it, and do it now. So I really did appreciate that. That was a position. So watch out for those families. That was the first thing yeah. you said to me. When you called, you said we have families who are having their daycare displaced and little or no, it wasn't about anything else, but it was about our people and our family. So I appreciated that and just wanted to mention that tonight. So, Thank you. And I just cannot think enough the way the staff joined together as a team and just, um, it wouldn't have been possible, but boy, you talk about teamwork and they just came together and made it happen. It was, I'm so impressed and things are running very well. So we're very excited about about it so thank you for your support letting us do it <laughs> thank you okay thank you Julie and then the next thing is um, educator effectiveness for principals now in the past we've talked as a board about evaluations for administrators and principals and as you recall educator effectiveness has come down and our principals um, and other administrators deliver this and work with our educators um, to do this. But principals have a very similar um, oh, in process in place. And at one time, we said as a board, no, we want our, our building principals evaluated on an annual basis. Mm. And that is different mm -hmm. than maybe what educator yeah. effectiveness um, well, they are evaluated on an annual basis under the uh, proposal that Dr. Mueller is bringing forth to us forward. So I'll let her explain that. Yeah. So what I wanted to present to you tonight is just um, how we have our administrative evaluation guideline that every administrator is to be evaluated every year. And I just wanted to show you how I plan to go about it using the educator effectiveness system and kind of basically to show you that. And then also... Um, each semester for the first year in their new position, though they are evaluated. So we'll have some of that happening with some of our new administrators. So basically, every year for all principals, they com it, and this is very similar to the, what all the teachers do and staff, is they complete a self-review. And I'll show you what each of these components look like on the next slides. They develop an educator effectiveness plan, which is they create what's called a school learning objective, which is... Um, helps drive their continuous improvement in their buildings and they have a professional practice goal and then they collect evidence and artifacts in what are called the principal practices and then I will I go in and do an observation um, of that and then afterwards have a conference with the each administrator about that um, observation or they call it in their educator effectiveness terms, a sampling school visit. <laughs> and the other part is mid-year, you actually go back and have another conversation with each of them. And this is every single administrator, building administrator and assistant principal principals um, to see where they're at with their goals also and do the mid-year check. So this is what the self-review looks like. And each principal actually ranks themselves on a scale of one to four, four being distinguished and one being unsatisfactory. And they have um, identifiers that they read and they actually check these boxes and determine where they feel they are. And this is for them in kind of helping them guide what direction they're going to go with their professional growth. So here are all of their components. And I always forget, I think 21. And 
they do this ranking of one through four for each one of these. And then they submit that through the Google Classroom this year um, to me. And it's more for them, but we can use it as a guiding point as, we're, as I'm working with them and developing the goals. <coughs> and then just in showing you what the forms look like, here is their professional practice goal form. So they actually fill out each of these questions. So based on the reflection, about, which is from their self-review, craft your goal statement. And then they list their SLO goal, if applicable, and they identify which of those domains they are going to be reflecting on. And then um, they describe applicable leadership or non-leadership activities that they plan on doing and resources that they're going to need to support them in achieving their goal. And this is where the discussion of their professional growth and um, how they're going to get there and how they're going to achieve that happens. Then here's their school. It's a little blurry up there, sorry. Their school um, learning objective. This takes a lot of time, and it does for the teachers too. Um, baseline data, they take a look at all of their school data, and this is all their achievement data. They look at their survey data. Um, even anecdotal data that they're hearing from teachers, and they have to show all that data. So they actually put it with links in, within this form, and then that drives, and then they determine what goals are they going to be looking at. Is it math goals, reading goals, you know, an environmental goal? And then they look at their, which student population. Is it ELL? Is it seventh grade? Is it high, you know, what grade level? Or is it a student, like, uh, special education students after looking at their data to determine what they're going to focus on for their continuous improvement. And as you can see, I mean, I've, I could talk forever on this sheet. So then they say, what's the growth? So this focuses on the growth of that group, not just the achievement, which makes this more meaningful um, and that. And then, you know, what's the time interval of the outcome and so forth. And then so as I'm doing observations, I write down and um, document evidence that I'm seeing. And then they also have their artifacts of evidence. And then I rank them on a one through four. And I have a discussion with them as to how they're doing in each of those practice areas. Oops. So then, so that's what everyone does every year. But then with educator effectiveness, every third year, they have kind of, I guess you could say, I don't know how I want to say it. They have, I can't, let's see, I want to be proper. They have a very thorough evaluation, okay? And so within that, everything happens that happens yearly, except within the first, from year to year, you're doing sampling visits, but we want to make sure we have at least three sampling visits that have happened that we use as evidence to do a very thorough evaluation. And then they have one announced school visit, they call it school visit, which is, it's much more lengthy. And we meet before it happens and talk about what they're gonna be doing and why and so on. And then we meet afterwards, so it's a little bit different. And that's every three years. And with the school visit, of course, comes a couple more forms. We have a form before we meet, and we have a form after we meet that we fill out and discuss. And you can see those in the presentation. So to make this manageable and um, more meaningful for the whole administrative group, um, we have them where they're all being evaluated every year. But as far as that summary year happens, that they're on a cycle. So they get the very thorough overview every third year. And then we have them within groups so that they can collaborate with their building partners um, in writing their SLOs and goals so that they can have kind of administrative PLC as much as they can. So any questions? Questions? So if, if someone is struggling, you may do a more thorough evaluation consecutive years, um, or if they're on a performance improvement plan, that may happen. Correct. So it'd be very similar to the teacher evaluation. If you're feeling like, you know, the performance isn't where, you know, it might not be, or even in a practice area, say it's a one, you'd work 
more thoroughly with them, meet with them more often, and do some more observation to try and help them get where they need to be. And other administrators are evaluated using the, the current, current tool, yeah. but not this tool. Correct. Um, only right now they have this for the building administ the principal group and associate principal group. The associate principals don't have quite as many practices, but a lot of them are still doing those just to see where they fit within those. Um, but as far as like the directors or the athletic director, those areas, they don't have um, the practices for those groups. So we're using the um, dispositions more from the Crown Global. Yeah. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank much. you. And okay, then moving on to consent agenda. We have eight items on this evening's consent agenda. Would you like to have any of those considered separately? Yes, I think I would. Which, which one, one <laughs> might that be? <laughs> Gary <laughs> wants to know which one. <laughs> the one that has the arrow but 10.4, <laughs> is that the one you wish to have separately? Yes, one and I appreciate arrow, my fellow board members' patience with me as I... Are there any others, others Tim? And, and maybe I have to ask for this out to ask this question, so mm -hmm. tell me if I need to, but on 10.7a, uh, the policy tonight first reading for the student privacy, I did not notice that there were any highlighted or deleted items in that. Does that mean that there were no changes to that policy or were they just omitted from what was in our deck? Because I noticed the next one that was there uh, for emergency nursing services had that, but. Yeah, Julie, please. Privacy. Okay, then I do not need to ask for okay. that Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so are there any others, though I should ask? Any others? Then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items with the exception of item 10.4. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by, uh, by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Then t item 10.4. Um, we have the budget variable, input variables presented. We've had some discussion already. Um, what would you like to do with that item? I don't need to extend the discussion other than asking for more time, and that's the only reason that I asked. Um, we have some information that sounds like we might get with an extension of time. <coughs> So are you asking for any specific thing to be done, or are you mo moving to approve the input variables as presented? No, she's not. <laughs> Anyone wanting to make a motion? I, I would like to make a motion to get um, input variables as presented and at 1.5, correct, was what we kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so that would presented to then, us okay. for informational purposes to take a look at. Was there anything else we wanted? I will second that motion. Okay. So just to clarify, we're approving input variables having dual variables running, 1.5 and then the current what they've shown us. So we are asking for them. Yeah. I wasn't saying let's approve. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You're saying hold then. You're saying we're I was not saying hold it and let's look at these unless right. I'm misunderstanding. I just wanted to I wanted to be able to look at them. Okay, because oh. really what, because I think what someone had suggested was we could run double b profiles and know what they are at 0.25 and know what they are at 1.5. As long as we're only moving one variable, it's not too much. That would material. allow them to move on. And what your motion was allowed that to happen. I thought you were saying to approve it. That's, that was my understanding. But. I mean, that would give us that opportunity for that input information. So make a motion to approve 0.25 and 1.5 for informational purposes only. only not. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And that's Just that. to be sure we're going to do yeah. this the right way. Yeah. Um, we are not running a one-year forecast model. We're running a five-year forecast model. And so when you say 1.5, I had originally interpreted that rather than this series of, if you look at the top of page one, it's 0.25 in the first year, 0.75, 1.25. You're saying, go ahead, run that model, but then also run a model which has 1.5 each year. 
Or are you saying just substitute 1.5 in the first year for 0.25 and leave the rest of the years the same? Correct. Well, That's okay. what I was understanding. Right. Is that well, what you guys were understanding? If you do that, then you can have 0.375 in the lower numbers uh, going forward. Can, no, nope, that is not what I meant. Okay. I just can, meant can I ask a, question, a clarifying question? So you. if we're going to ask them to run something, are we then going to move forward then with, we have to vote on what that percentage is going to be, right? I mean, we're simply just running the numbers right now? Or are we moving, forging ahead and planning the whole projections into the next several years based on? Well, my understanding is this is just input into them coming up with a template. It's not even a preliminary budget at this point. So it's no real action other than saying we're just going to start with this number. The concern is in the past when we started with a number, we've later felt That's locked into that. Right. Yeah. But we're actually not. It's, so we're start with two numbers, it's, really. it's ours. Yeah. I, I do, though, um, with the 1.5, you know, we're... A five-year budget, I, I, I get why you want to have one, I understand that, but that's a really long projection time that really I'm most concerned about 17. Um, so, I mean, I tend to agree with you for the one year. I just want to be very careful because I think the 18 proposed budget had a, like a point seven five, and... I would just say that uh, tonight we had some conversation about what the dollar um, differential is. Um, between 0.25 and 1.5. We had conversation about what percentage of the budget's made up by salaries, and you all understand the impact of compounding percentage increases. Yeah. And so I, it's, uh, as your financial advisor, um, I would not suggest you look at things in one-year snippets, because you are, in effect, making a commitment to funding that and then whatever percentage increase upon that in the future. Um, certainly can do it. it we will do whatever you request us to do. Um, my advice is that, um, as Chuck Olson told us, uh, look at things in long term rather than uh, one year impact. But again, uh, those are just ideas for you to process. I, I just want to be sure we come back to you with what you're looking for. I'm really focused on this year in part because I feel we're going to be bringing a compensation model that's going to start in FY for FY 18 that will change this. And so I'm really focused on this this year. If we want to run it dually 1.5 with the other numbers they have, you know, so be it. If they just we just want to focus on this year, that's okay too. I They've already run it at 1.5, so I don't know that. We've not run any. Oh, I thought no. that, that one report. That was that, point two five. That oh, was a. Plus. That was just the. the we name of it. spent time doing some hand ciphering okay. because people were asking questions yeah. before we ran the budget. I know I got to think without five years, out five years, what it would be at 1.5. So. <laughs> so what is your motion, Anita? Yeah, Anita. <laughs> Call me yeah. tomorrow when I'm not. <laughs> you can't feel as stupid to run, as I do. To run the fiscal year 17.25 and 1.5 numbers. Because the other number, we'll get this back next year anyhow. If yeah. the, and we'll have other numbers to look at then. So, okay. Yes, that is what I would. And that, Tim, that's second your second. That, that's, okay. Yep, that is what I said. So a motion has been made to. Can I ask a clarifying yes. question? Yep. So it would be 1.5 for year 17 and then 0.75 and one point, keep the rest the same yep. and just change that one. Okay. But to also have the 0.25 for 17. Yep, with what we're seeing. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. I'm just gonna ask something off the board. If, cause we've done these variables before, right? What was this year, last year? Was it at only 0.25? This is the first year that the PMA model is including the multiple years, and we were kind of excited about the possibility of. But we included, we did, oh, think on this never mind. handout yeah, that we got here yeah. today, it was the input variable uh, was 2%. Okay. And we actually ended on oh, 1.6. Right. Sorry, I yeah. misunderstood the question. Yeah, that's okay. Is that? That is, that answers that. Yeah. So. Okay. So. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the 
input variables with consideration for fiscal year 17 running a 0.25 and a 1.5 under per projected percent salary increases with the rest of the variables remaining as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay, then under. Thank you. Board yeah. reports and discussion. <laughs> call the board members in the order of roll call. If you have any committee reports, um, please share them at this time. And Mr. Young, I'm gonna call on you first. Um, can I go at the end, I guess? Yes, I just you can. Think. You well, can. Anita, Jake I always wanted to say that, but I've never <laughs> said that. Because I tell her she'd have to be president oh to go gosh, at the end. I know. <laughs> Anita. Oh. Um, thank you for your um, patience tonight, Jay. Thank you for your patience. Because I've kn known you for many, many years, and I can tell when you're starting to get like where you're going to pop at us, and you didn't pop. <laughs> <laughs> Like it. Yeah, oh. Always good natured, and thank you, Julie, for all your work on this too. Because you have to understand, it's just to me, it's just not. And I mean that. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean you're very, you're very intelligent about all these numbers, and you know exactly how things are supposed to look. And so when we start messing with these, you are very. Uh, you like things how they are, and we start digging around and everything. Yeah. Digging around. <laughs> Frustrates Starting you, to and I appreciate you. He's getting into yes, I appreciate you putting up with that. Because I am not comfortable just saying the CPI is zero, so the employees are getting zero or 0.25. I just cannot sleep at night with that. I don't like it. It doesn't make me feel. It doesn't make me feel good, and I don't think it would make them feel good. So that's why. And things may still end up at 0.25, or who knows. We have to change things in Madison. So I'm going to end on that happy note. Okay. <laughs> Kate Mayer. Um, ditto to what Anita said. And also I include the patients with my fellow board members because I, I do think in terms of these categories, I have the biggest learning curve. And all the questions you allow me to ask help me learn more that I need to learn about. Um, special thank you to Sue and Chris and you know, what happened with K-4, I'm not gonna go into that because it's been said already, but as a mother, um, what you did for the families to make transition smooth is remarkable, remarkable. And I can't imagine what you had to do, but I'm guessing it was a lot. So thank you for all of that. Um, that's it. And Merry Christmas, because I don't know if I won't see you, right? Right. We won't be back until January, so Merry that Christmas to the public and all of our staff that's out there and my lovely board members, Jay and Chris. Lovely. lovely. You're lovely, Gary. Merry Christmas. <laughs> hey, Lisa. I'm about ready to blow up, too, with the, with the um, wage increase stuff, so I don't have a lot to say other than um, Tom wasn't here and I ate his dessert. So don't tell anybody. It was so good. I, I want. To, can I have some more? I, I had to put my. I wanted here. his. He wouldn't give it to me. It's and like, I, I, can I eat it? I need some sugar right now. She's on number three. That's all I have to say. Okay. Oh, that is funny. But yes. Merry Christmas. Um, Merry Christmas. Tim Menninger. Oh, okay. I have a, a few things tonight. Uh, first off, on the, the 4K issues. Again, thank you to everybody. There, there's so many great things happening in the school district. That's another example. And, you know, hopefully that word gets out in the community because that is, is just um, utterly awesome. Um, I, I was going to do this when we uh, voted on the consent agenda, but then there were some other things going. I got distracted, so I thought I'd do it now. And just, I, I almost asked for 10.6, the school year calendar, to be pulled out just on general principles mm -hmm. so I could talk about my year-round school, but I didn't. <laughs> oh. um, Thank so. you for that okay, Tom. Gift. Yes. Um, <laughs> from that standpoint. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas uh, to all the staff, everybody out there. Have a great holiday season uh, that is coming up. Um, this is our last meeting for the year as well. And no, we will not meet until sometime, I think, January 11th. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to uh, just uh, get the word out there tonight and make everyone aware that I will not be seeking re-election. So that if anyone what? has any interest in that, the word can get out on that wow. as well. What? I have three more grandbabies on the way, number seven, eight, oh, and nine, my and it's going to be wow. very busy. So that's crazy. A lot of things going on. Wow! 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 Uh, Mr. Dunlap, can you top what? that? <laughs> <laughs> she, 
<laughs> I can't. <laughs> no, I uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and I appreciate Jay's uh, patience with Anita. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jane. <laughs> what a meeting tonight. Okay. Well, Alrighty. and Jeff, did you have anything? Um, okay, <laughs> okay, so I'm kind of nervous. But, um, I'm going to say happy holidays uh, to begin with, and then just a recap. Uh, thanks for Meltdown for coming out. Uh, if I don't know if the cameras can catch all the people in the back, but that's a really large classroom, and the advisors, I give them credit for taking control of that. <laughs> and... Um, I guess parent-teacher conferences was today, I believe, again. So um, it's good to see teachers uh, try to help students. And I guess that's all. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I just want to, um, I do have a committee report. We had personnel and governance, and so we had a lot of stuff that moved forward. Um, thanks to Melissa and Jay for all the work you did. Melissa, I know, does a lot of that. But that did take a lot of work. Um, the, the nurses. Um, the nursing services was a was a big one too, and that we spent a lot of time on. Um, it responded to the whole CPR issue and that kind of thing. So, um, and then I did want to say happy holidays. I saw some place that in acknowledgement that our students are so diverse, and between December first and January seventeenth or January fifteenth, there are seventeen different holidays. Oh. that are celebrated by mm -hmm. five different religions and so mm -hmm. to acknowledge that and to acknowledge that our student base is very diverse mm -hmm. and we may have students um, in our schools right now that may not be um, celebrating the Christian Christmas holiday just wanted to say happy holiday to everyone um, so with that I would just note our next meeting is January 11th January 20th to the 22nd is the school board convention in Milwaukee mm -hmm. January 25th is our next board meeting after that we have some policies for review uh, public school open enrollment youth options any of those items I think those are all sulk mm -hmm. um, committees yes. yep. so anything that any kind of direction I are those just up for review annual review or every three-year review Kate? yes and and one of those is pretty much just updating with new law okay so Thanks. minor changes and then another one is looking at um, one document we've had that we're looking at separating into two documents for ease of our constituents who read the documents but minor changes in the if you have any thoughts on do you want to take a look at those have any thoughts please let Kate may Kate know and her committee can take a look at it and I think both of those <coughs> put in the cloud recently I think I saw they might be in your committee cloud so you can access uh, well, them through the committee okay. so with that I would entertain a motion to adjourn from Anita is there a second second Lisa all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay motion carries we are adjourned